Hello my friends, I'm the itty bitty Celtic witch and today we are behind the scenes for an animal deck collection. So I'm going to be sharing the animal tarot and oracle decks that are part of my collection. So without further ado, let's get started. So our first deck is the Druid Animal Oracle. And this is one of my absolute favorite decks. I mention it all of the time in the different videos I create because it's a deck I work with frequently. So the Druid Animal Oracle has a lot of Celtic inspiration in the deck and the imagery itself. And then in the guidebook, it goes further into details on this. So we can see in a quick look at the guidebook that there's a quick look at each of the cards and their imagery, as well as some key phrases, pronunciations so that you can learn more of the Gaelic around the deck. And then it goes into the meaning and further down the reverse meaning. So let's take a look at a few of these cards. Now it is definitely worth mentioning that the cardstock here is very, very nice. Here I am dropping it, but it's a very thick sort of cardstock. These are bigger cards. If we look at for comparison, a typical tarot size card, you can see that the Druid Animal Oracle is quite a bit larger. So let's take a look at some of the artwork. Here we have cat, and into these there's a lot of different symbolism folded into the background as well in a lot of the different cards. So there's a lot to really work with in this deck. And the imagery is just simply beautiful. If you guys have watched a few of these videos before, then you'll know that Will Worthington, who is the artist of this deck in particular, is one of my favorite deck artist illustrations. I love all of his decks and they're all in my top favorites to work with. It's a very, very subtle, nice imagery. So here is a really good example with Otter. And what I was talking about, about different aspects in the background that are tied in as well. So in Otter here, we have Salmon further in the river. So if you were looking at how Salmon and Otter intertwine this card, we might meet Wisdom from Celtic Mythology and Salmon folded into the playfulness and the flexibility of Otter to be at home on land and sea. And then we also have a harp carving as well, bringing in that musical inspiration and traditions around storytelling in Celtic culture. So there's a lot to really draw upon in these cards that complements the energy of the animals themselves quite beautifully. So that is the Druid Animal Oracle. Next up, we have the Animism Tarot, which I was using just a second ago as an example of a tarot size card for comparison. Now the Animism Tarot is an indie deck. It is absolutely stunning and it's one of my favorites. It's been part of my collection for several years now. I really love the backings on this card. I love how the moon meets the sun and there's that energy of cycles unfolding. So let's take a look at a couple of the cards. Right away we have the Queen of Pentacles standing so strong and confidently here. And then we have the Five of, nope, that's the Six of Pentacles. I uh, had to uh, take a closer look there. The Six of Pentacles here with Crocodile or Alligator, I'm not quite sure. And it's a really, really beautiful depiction. I love the use of color in the artistry here. It's got a lot of lovely deep purple and blue and aqua hues in the water. The Eight of Pentacles. I did shuffle this deck, but we're coming up all pentacles. And here we have Beaver swimming around. And the pentacles are incorporated into the imagery as well around the dam that Beaver is building. So hard at work there with the Eight of Pentacles. 
Then Four of Swords. See, there are some other suits. The Four of Swords has Koala sleeping so contentedly, resting here. A really calming depiction of the Four of Swords. That is one thing which I really do enjoy working with animal decks for, is that tie-in to animal symbolism. And you can also have a lot of opportunity for folklore like we were looking at with the Druid Animal Oracle a minute ago. Judgment here, a very patient looking card, very calm. I like the energy that the animals really bring to this deck. The Three of Wands standing tall, looking out over possibilities and potential, a real symbol of strength here in this card and that fiery energy as well. And then the star. Isn't this a dreamy depiction of the star where we're looking out at this beautiful night sky, ties into the landscape. It's very calming and a very hopeful imagery. So that is the Animism Tarot and we'll wrap it up here for this deck with the Page of Cups and Otter playfully swimming beneath the waves. Really lovely underwater depictions in this deck as well. So then now let's take a look at the Tarot Fauna. The Tarot Fauna is again an indie deck and one of my absolute favorites. So this deck has a lot of really lovely animal imagery and it does tend to draw on particular animals. The suits are focused around one particular animal. Whereas when we were looking at the Animism Tarot, there's a variety of different animals incorporated into each of the tarot suits. With the tarot fauna, it centers around owls, for instance, or fox. So let's take a look at the cards. And the cardstock is so lovely. It has such a nice, it has such a nice feel to it. So the Empress here, very, very serene, very calming imagery. So then we have the next card, which is the Eight of Feathers. And here we have Owl. And this is what I was just talking about a second ago, with owls being the archetype of the feathers or traditional sword suit. Here we have the Eight of Swords, so owl being in that moment of patience and really thinking things out. Next up we have the three, no, that's the Ten of Torches. I was looking at the camera, not at the card in front of me. The Ten of Torches, and here we have Fox balancing all the torches. Now this is a really different depiction on the Ten of Wands. Usually with the Ten of Wands, we see a lot of burdensome energy. This is slightly shifted here. While Fox definitely has more torches than they can carry, they're still persevering. They're still going on. We can see a lot of the dedication and motivation in Fox to carry these forward. So it's a really nice alternative depiction of the Ten of Wands traditional card. The tower here as well. I really like the imagery and the take on the tower as a forest fire because it really blends in how these sudden changes lead to new life sprouting up, which we can see in the actual soil in the half of the forest that has already been, been burnt through. So the tower is definitely a card which highlights a lot of upheaval and change, but it also in this depiction offers room for growth and opportunity from that change in that archetype. So let's take a look at a couple more cards. Oh, the Queen of Torches. This is one of my favorite cards. It's just so adorable. We see Mother Fox kissing Little Fox on the head and they're just hanging out in the meadow. It's a really, it's a really lovely, gentle, nurturing card. Very creative. And the Two of Rocks, here we have Bear carrying bear cubs on their back and traveling through the streams. So then the rock suit is bear archetypes, whereas we have foxes in the torch and then we had the owls for feathers. So a really, really lovely deck to work with. And we'll wrap it up here with the moon and this beautiful depiction of a moth flying up towards the moon in this nighttime sky as we sort of have the perspective of laying on the forest floor and looking up through the trees towards this full moon and this starry night sky. So that was the tarot fauna. Next up, we have the medicine cards. And the medicine cards, as you can see right away, we'll start off with the guidebook. The medicine cards has a very thick 
hardcover guidebook. There's a lot of extensive information on each of the cards. So this is a deck that is based on Native American traditions and it is created with a beautiful writing and interpretations and discussion of the different energy that each of the animals bring. So the Medicine Cards deck is a really wonderful deck to work with for learning more about these traditions. Now this deck is a bit of an older deck in the sense of publication dates. It was published, let me just go back to the guidebook for a second, I believe it was published in the 80s. Yeah, it was published first in 1988. So in terms of deck dates, this is definitely one of the older decks in my collection. So let's take a look at a couple of these wonderful cards. Such beautiful learning opportunities with this deck. So the one thing to mention right away with the cardstock of this deck is it is extremely bendy. It's a very, very bendy sort of deck to work with. So let's take a look at a couple of the cards. We have Elk, then we have Jaguar, Dog, and there's quite a few cards in this deck. It is a very, very thick deck. There's a lot of different animals present in here, and there's a lot of information about each of the animals themselves. So it's a very deep, very extensive, comprehensive animal deck. Now let's take a look at a couple more cards. Mouse there, wild boar, frog, and swan. So that is the medicine cards deck. Now let's take a look at the animal totem tarot. So the Animal Totem Tarot, I have it in its original box here, again has a very thick, very thick hardy guidebook there, has one of the little lifty things, I mentioned that in a previous video, and it's absolutely my favorite thing. When I find decks that have the little lifty thing, it makes me so happy. So this card stock is just traditional sort of everyday kind of mass market deck cardstock. It's it's absolutely fine and I'm cool with it. The two of wands here will start off with a stingray. So there's a lot of information in here as well about the different animal energy. As you saw in the guidebook, there is a very thick guidebook. There's a lot written about each of the animals and different potential interpretations of the cards themselves. Now, sort of where it is similar to the animism tarot, which we are looking at, is that there isn't a single type of animal present throughout an entire suit. So each suit has multiple different types of animals present in it. Which is really interesting and nice because you also do get a lot of different interpretations. That being said, I absolutely love how the terra fauna folds everything very flexibly in together with a single type of animal in each suit. So both I am absolutely a fan of. We have the Eight of Cups and Salmon just jumping out of the river there. Makes me think of quite a bit of Celtic mythology. And here we have the cover art of the deck guidebook, the deck box rather with the magician and fox and next up we have justice so one thing to keep in mind with this deck in particular the tower here is that some of the images around the animals can be more challenging so the main images I've shown here are some of the lighter cards but when you do get into some of the darker meanings of the tarot archetypes and the more difficult ones to work with there is that represented in the imagery of the animals as well and what they are experiencing. So it is something to be mindful of when you are picking out a deck if that's something that's going to prove challenging for you, but it really is a wonderful deck. This really messed with my mind at first because it looks like the ant should be this way, but it is not how it actually is. It is not the type of ant and so the hanged man is upside down. So let's wrap it up here with our King of Wands looking very, very fierce 
out and about at the landscape with quite a bit of determination. I love the expression going on on the King of Wands face here. Next up we have the Bird Messages Oracle and this is absolutely a stunning deck to work with. So this has like a kind of fold away piece and then you pop out the decking guidebook. So the guidebook, let's take a quick look at that first. We have a good chunk of information on each of the birds that are featured in this. So it is bird messages, so all of the animals in this deck are birds. Now let's take a closer look at the cards themselves. The cardstock is again, it's fine, it's flexible, it's great. I'm not too fussy on cardstock generally, but I do like to mention it in case it's something that is of particular interest to you. Now this one is actually very glossy, there's a bit of a shine to it. It's, it's a good deck to work with. So Bald Eagle, we have the name of the bird, and then also a key phrase with some information, symbolism, key energy, to keep in mind when drawing that card. And then of course, if you're ready to go deeper into it, then you can look at the guidebook. And then the back of the cards, I absolutely love all of the feathers and how they are depicted here. And Peregrine Falcon. There's a lot of different birds in this deck and I really like working with bird energy. So it was a really good fit for me. It's one of my favorite decks. I read with it often as an energy of comfort. Not that it can't deliver those meanings with poignancy, but I find that the animal energy here is more of a comforting feel to it, which is sometimes really necessary in a reading. You can be very aware of the hard stuff, the challenges that's unfolding in life, and also want to seek out some intuitive messages with that perspective of calming, comforting imagery. And that is what the Bird Messages Oracle is for me. So a wonderful deck to work with to learn more about the different birds, about some of their symbolism, about some of their key phrases and key energies. And of course, I love raven. I love ravens. I love crows. So just focusing and pausing on this card for a moment. But isn't that, isn't that color contrast beautiful? It makes me think of Samhain and that beautiful orange and black imagery we see when Raven is around so often. It's, it's a great deck to work with. And there's Macaw thinking laterally to solve a problem, having a different think about how to make his way through the solution. So next up is the Animal Spirits Knowledge Cards. So these are very much focused on, on more of a learning experience. You can read with them as oracle cards, but I have personally found them to be more of an informational deck, which is fine. I love informational decks. I like learning. So here we have Tiger, and you can see that on the back of the deck, this is what I mean where it's more of an informational deck. So instead of having a plain back like the bird messages cards, you think I know where I just put them and they were hiding behind me. So see how the back here is completely blank. We just have feathers and artwork. That way you can sort of close your eyes or just not, not look at the imagery of the animal itself and allow the choice to be made that way. Here, if you're going to be using this as an oracle deck, you probably want to close your eyes because you're going to be picking up on these cards very mindfully. So there is Tiger and a lot of really, really lovely imagery in this deck as well. There's a lot of different types of animals. I bought this deck several years ago, maybe maybe like seven or eight years ago. And I actually used it primarily for its artwork because it was a very informational deck for me. Instead of drawing it as an oracle set of cards, I used it for that art, for that imagery, and tying that into my practice. So that is the Animal Spirits knowledge cards. And this one, I just have to pause here. I love this beautiful imagery here in this card. It is just a stunning depiction. 
So let's take a look at our next deck. And as there is deck chaos behind me, I do believe we are at the Wild Unknown Tarot. So this deck is sort of an animal deck. It doesn't focus on animals quite as predominantly as the other decks we have looked at. But there aren't a lot of people in this deck. This is very much an animal deck in that sense. Now there are some cards that are pip cards so they don't show any animal whatsoever which is not the case with the first card we pulled out, the Four of Cups and rats sneaking over the cups here. So there are a lot of animals present in this deck. Again this deck can have some darker imagery around the animals that are incorporated into it which is again just something to be mindful of. This is the Pips card that I was mentioning earlier where we have the seven of pentacles as just the pentacles depicted. There aren't any animals present in that card in particular. And yet when we go to our next card we have butterfly. So again it's a bit of both. It ties in both animal imagery and Pip's imagery into the cards themselves. And this is a very sort of contrasted color wise deck where we do have either that illustration kind of look, the black and white sketch look, complemented by different bursts of color like with the Daughter of Pentacles and the Father of Swords side by side. You can see that burst of color on particular parts of the imagery but in this case not the animals themselves. Here with that Ten of Wands card we again see that Pips imagery where it's just the wands present. And then here we have a nature depiction so there's no animals. It's not quite Pips but it does have that nature tie into it. So that is the Wild Unknown Tarot. Next up we have the Wooden Tarot and the Wooden Tarot is another indie deck that is part of my collection. It is created by Skull Garden and all of these details for the decks will be below in case you are interested in any of them. So this imagery does tie in animals but again we do have some Pips imagery particularly around uh, bones so some of the cards are represented by different representations of bones. We also have blooms as one of the suits so a depiction of floral imagery and here we go right away with what I was just talking about bones at the front of the card. We have the ten of bones here. So this deck is part of a series or a set of decks and you might recognize the imagery from one of the decks I shared in my Lenormand collection, the Seekers Lenormand. Same creator and what they did was they painted these images, they created them on an actual piece of wood. So you do get a lot of the wood grain folded into the cards themselves. Now this is one of my absolute favorite cards in the deck. The fool with the mouse and they're walking along and there is this snake underneath. It's just one of my absolute favorite cards in the entire deck. And then we do have the god of bones so not quite a human depiction here but sort of. It isn't a primary theme in the deck. There are a few other god cards in there for each of the suits. There is again the Queen of Stones but I've still included it in this deck because it is more of an animal deck than say a human depiction of imagery on the decks. That was a tongue twister in there happening. The Queen of Bones. I really like this interpretation of the magician. It's just it's really really nice and really really stunning. And the Wheel of Fortune with a spider. So that was the wooden tarot. Now to wrap it all up with our final deck we have the Celtic Oracle book and cards. This deck does have a guidebook and then the deck itself is tucked in there with a little lifty thing. This deck is both a plant and animal deck so you may have seen some of these cards if you watched my plant oracle collection. 
Now the cards are, you can tell which ones are the animals and which are the plants. I've separated them before this video. The animals are the orange ones. So we'll take a look at those today. So let's take a closer look at these cards. So we can see right away that there is Gaelic on the deck. There is the English translation in the guidebook. So if you're looking to learn more about the sort of Celtic meanings and names for different animals, then this is a fabulous deck to work with. It has been in my collection for many years and it is one of my absolute favorites. I love working with the imagery, I love working with the animal archetypes that are present, and the Celtic symbolism which fits very closely with my path. So that is the Celtic Oracle book and cards. So now for our traditional behind the scenes look at all of the general deck chaos and also by me where I'm sitting cross-legged behind the camera. So that's all for our video today my friends. If you are interested in seeing any of these decks in a more extensive look like through a flip through then simply pop a comment down below to let me know. If you'd like to check out more videos like this, check out the tarot playlist where I feature the other collections where I show some of the different decks that inspire my path. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, please do hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to book a reading with me, then have a look at the Etsy links below for more details. Wishing you a most wonderful day, my friends, and so very many blessings. <laughs>